So I have a lot of questions to go through, but you know what? I am excited to go and answer them one by one. Welcome to Q&A with Animad, and as you guys probably know with this, I have gathered 10 of the best questions that I could find all around the internet, which includes places like Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube, and I'm gonna go and answer them to you here right now. And let me just say, you guys have done a pretty good job so far in finding some really good questions, because honestly, uh, it's not just like finding good questions to go and answer. Honestly, the ones that I have here, they really are like diamonds in the rough where I have to go through some dif different questions, but then when there's like a golden opportunity to go and answer a great one, I will go and take it. So with that said, let's go and get this one started with uh, the cool 3050 feral hogs on Twitter. And the hogs ask, since Disney's acquisition spree shows no signs of stopping what are the three companies you'd like to see them buy so what I would like to see them buy that's a, that's honestly a very good question well to be honest I did give a little bit of a thought on that and uh, I think my three biggest candidates would have to be Apple because let's be honest if you know how things work at Disney or uh, when you look into like the making of things at Disney Animation and Pixar they do use a lot of Apple products especially when Steve Jobs was uh, at one point one of the big heads of uh, Pixar and then when he was included in the whole Disney gang well uh, as you could probably tell a lot of uh, Disney animation stuff is actually made with Apple products so Disney full-on buying Apple they might as well have like all the technology they can have uh, another one that I would like to see them buy actually you know a great one that they would go and purchase would have to be YouTube because as a, as a YouTuber myself uh, I could pretty much say that I am pretty much fed up with Google's non-transparent shenanigans. We need a new management going on right now. I would like to see YouTube under new management put that little logo with Iago and Zazu like they did with the Enchanted Tiki Room. And then there is the third one which I think is probably the most interesting of my three that I would suggest is honestly Sony Pictures or even the entire Sony Corporation because to be very honest uh, if uh, unless there is some kind of like uh, change of plans that would happen in the future like the cinematic universe with Venom is going terribly and Sony is losing money and they don't want to use it anymore let's be honest Buying out Sony Pictures is probably the only way for Disney to get the film rights of Spider-Man. And yes, I know it is pretty dumb of me thinking about uh, one little thing when it comes to buying an entire company, but let's be honest guys, that is basically what everyone has done with the whole Fox deal. Like back in the days when it was announced that Disney would go purchase the entirety of 21st Century Fox, the only thing that people would ever think of is just that, oh look at that, now that means that X-Men and Fantastic Four are going to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So let's be honest, it ain't going to be that much different and I'm sure if that day would ever come that Disney would buy Sony Pictures, that would mostly be the only thing they would ever talk about. Okay, so with that said, uh, that's a great question, but now it is time we're going to go and move on to our next one, which is going to be from Super Jordan Reviews on YouTube. And Super Jordan asks, uh, I noticed that you don't talk about the scores a lot in your reviews. What are some of your favorite movie scores and score composers? Doesn't have to be exclusive to animation. Well, yes, that is honestly very true and maybe that would depend on the individual but in my case I don't really value the score as much as some others because it, it does happen easily that a movie can have such an amazing score but the film itself can be absolutely terrible so uh, for me the score is not that big of a factor and sometimes I wouldn't necessarily talk about it but in terms of some of my favorite scores I'll, I'll start off with the animation ones because I do have some of those uh, first off uh, The Lion King is one major standout 
score for me. Like what Hans Zimmer did there is just beautiful. Uh, another one would be the Prince of Egypt. That's another like grand, beautiful score that they have done. Um, honestly, maybe I would throw in Finding Nemo as well. That's that's another like really nice, calming score. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? I just realized another great score that I thought of, and this was something that I realized when I watched it on the big screen. Spirited Away. Spirited Away has a beautiful score that really does help out to enhance into the movie you know like to help you get yourself be immersive in the world of spirited away uh but i also do have some live action movies that i really do love the score like for example uh the king's speech which is one of my favorite live action movies uh that one has a great score and also the star wars movies of course by john williams those ones are actually really awesome so i would include those ones there and i guess it doesn't necessarily matter which one specifically just uh the scores from all the main ones whether it be the original trilogy the prequel trilogy or the uh sequel trilogy i like what john williams has done with them they are absolutely awesome and i love their scores all right, so let's go on to our next question, which is going to be from Zax Hacks on YouTube. And Zax asked me, uh, what's your favorite Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks film? Also, do you work out? You look kind of jacked low key. Oh, d does it actually show? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I often doubt myself, like, if all that workout would actually be worth it. Like, I mean, like, maybe there is some significant change, but I don't know if this is, like, a anything like if this is even noticeable as like some kind of result, but maybe it's just me Maybe I am still kind of scrawny or chubby or whatever <laughs> No, but anyways to go and answer your question uh, my favorite movies from those companies uh, Well, of course Fantasia I have stated this uh, a few times before that Fantasia is not just my favorite Disney movie It's my favorite movie of all time uh, the, uh, in terms of Pixar that one is honestly a little bit tough because I do love most of them since most of them are absolutely amazing, but if I have to pick out a favorite, maybe it would be like Finding Nemo or The Incredibles or, oh, Inside Out, actually. Maybe it could be Inside Out. That That's something I have yet to determine, but um, Inside Out would definitely be up there if I would have to go and pick one. And as for DreamWorks, I would have to say, well, honestly, maybe I would go with some of the first... Uh, DreamWorks films, either The Road to El Dorado or The Prince of Egypt. Yes, I know I didn't really go into some of the more modern ones or some of the more popular ones like Shrek or Kung Fu Panda, but honestly, like with those two in particular, they are absolute masterpieces. And um, going with your question about working out, to be very honest, yes, I actually do work out. Like nonstop, I would go and exercise three times a week at the gym. Uh, mostly to make sure I would keep myself healthy and that I, I, I treat my body well because that that's an important thing that you got to do for your own well-being is that you, you know you got to go and uh, treat yourself you got to go and work out to make sure that you don't end up being fat or unhealthy or anything like that so I do work out and what I mainly do is uh, a bit of muscle gains so I work out my arms and legs and abs uh, to make sure that like, I, I, I'm not aiming to be fit, but to be as fit as I can, you know, to make sure I can tone my body, uh, to make myself look good, to make sure that uh, I keep myself healthy. I think, like, it, it's more the combining factors that I exercise three times a week, mainly because... I want to look good and I want to keep myself healthy. So um, it, it's just one way of treating myself, you know, to make, you know, you know, to take care of myself. Basically, I think that's the best way to put it. Maybe I could do more exercises, you know, like exercise maybe four or maybe five times a week. But, you know, I, I do have a steady pace that I'm going with and I am happy with it. So uh, hopefully that will answer the whole workout question if anybody is curious about it. Okay, so now let's go on to the next question, in which we have uh, one from Aaron Dalhun on Facebook. And Aaron asks, uh, which animation lookback project was the most interesting to work on? And I'm going to be very honest, I really don't know how to answer that question. Because when it comes to actually doing animation lookback, I am always interested 
into working on each and every single one of them because they all bring in a very unique story and looking into each animated film or TV show that they would work on. It's always a unique experience when making an animation look back. Now, of course, there are some standout ones that are a lot more different than the traditional format of animation look back, uh, which includes uh, Looney Tunes, where I would look into the characters, Epic Mickey file style instead of going into each different project. And then, of course, there was uh, the animation look back on The Thief and the Cobb where I would just talk about one movie and that's it and probably is my shortest animation look back that I've ever done but overall uh, looking into each and every single one of them I don't think I could pick one that is the most interesting or one that is more interesting than the other because I'm always interested I, I like I always pick one that no matter what it's always going to be interesting it's always going to be fascinating to learn and one that would be an absolute blast to go and make the video and just put it out online for you all to go and enjoy uh, I apologize if that's not a direct answer to that question but uh, honestly, that's how I feel regarding if there is one that is more interesting than another. Honestly, I, can't, I would say no because they're all interesting for me. Alright, so our next question is going to be from Captain Puffin on Twitter. And the captain asked me, uh, Since the remakes don't seem to be stopping, what is the one animated Disney movie that would make a great remake? Well, to be very honest, when it comes to having a remake... That pretty much gives an opportunity to go and retell the story. And honestly, I think what would make a great remake would be if you would take a Disney movie that is a little bit flawed in terms of its story, uh, then you would go and rework on it to make something that could actually improve on the original or offer something new. Like, one great example that I can think of is actually The Black Cauldron. Because the thing with The Black Cauldron is that it actually does have some really good materials. And that is something that I want to look into as well, is that there is some very strong potential, but execution-wise, it may not be the best. And The Black Cauldron is a great example of that, because that's actually an animated film that does lean a little bit more towards classic fantasy, and I can imagine Disney doing some great things with it, and there are some elements that really do work out, like the Horn King, the main villain of the feature, but in regards to the movie itself, it is a bit poorly executed, especially with the story and many of its protagonists, where uh, I'm not really invested as much on them, or like either the comedic sidekicks, like with Fluter Flam or Gurgi or whatever. Um, but I can imagine that the materials are already there to make a great movie, so making a remake on that, th it would open... The, it would open the doors to create something absolutely amazing with it where it would be given a second chance uh, to have a better story to be developed or maybe something that could stay a little bit more true to the original source material with the uh, Chronicles of Prydain books and they can actually make a Black Cauldron movie that would actually be worth the Disney name. Something that could actually be great and enjoyable. Uh, another one in that same veins would actually be Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Again, this is actually something where the world building is absolutely amazing. What they have done in order to fully create the world of Atlantis is absolutely phenomenal and even admirable, down to the point that they even create an entire Atlantean language. But in terms of the execution with the story and the characters, that is a little bit lacking. It's something that you would wish it would be as strong as the world building in that film. So uh, to answer your question, I would say either The Black Cauldron or Atlantis. Those would definitely be uh, my two on that. All right, so now let's go and jump onto the next question, which is gonna be on YouTube from Noah da Ark, and Noah asked me, has anyone ever said you look like Josh Gad because you look like Josh Gad? Oh, believe me, I have been told many times that I look like Josh Gad. Uh, but you know, there is actually something pretty interesting about that 
because even though I do get several comments of people comparing me to Josh Gad in terms of my looks, which I, I don't necessarily find that all offensive or anything like that. I mean, Josh Gad is not a bad looking dude, so I, I really don't mind the comparison, but uh, there is actually at one point where there were a few people that thought not only do I look like Josh Gad, but I also sound like Josh Gad. And I actually do have a pretty interesting story for you. Uh, it was actually a few years ago, I was once hired by a little company, like, they were already starting, like, they were just, like, up and coming, they wanted to start doing their own little animated projects, and they actually brought me on board, uh, to do a little Frozen parody video, in which I, they thought that I actually sounded like Olaf from Frozen, where I, I did a little audition just to see what happened, and personally, I never really thought that, I really sounded like Josh Gad, or my Josh Gad impression is a little bit lacking, you know, like, Hello, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs! <laughs> you know, like, maybe it might need a little bit work, but, uh, apparently they thought it was actually good enough, so... Uh, I did do the lines, but unfortunately, as the years passed by, it looks like the project never really happened, and... For me, I felt like, yeah, maybe it's probably for the best, because... The whole thing in itself is a lot more like some kind of robot chicken skit where at some point uh, Elsa ended off killing Anna for some reason, maybe indirectly, and then it ended off in like some kind of bloodbath where the characters are dead and then we have Olaf in the middle where he's somehow becoming all sinister like he did all this like, hello, uh, my name is Olaf. <laughs> So yeah, there was at one point that I did voice Olaf, even though it never really happened, and it was for, again, a robot chicken style skit, but it's a bit of an interesting story that I want to go and tell you, and this is probably the first time public uh, publicly that I actually presented to you a Olaf impression. Maybe you guys might think it's good, me, I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. You guys will be the judge! Comment down below if you think my Olaf impression is good or bad. <laughs> okay, okay, all jokes aside, uh, let's go on to our next question that we got here. And it's gonna be from GornZX, and uh, let me just adjust that a little bit because the uh, text here is pretty tiny. And GornZX actually emailed me this, and uh, Gorn asks, <clears throat> Hey Matt! Uh, it has been a year since the Change the Channel controversy began, and so far after that, Doug has not apologized. Uh, do you think Doug is trying to ignore the controversy, or he actually feels sorry and don't know what to say? Also, do you think his fan base is becoming toxic? Oh boy, I guess uh, this will be a little bit of a controversial question right over here, but... You know, if I can be very honest, even though Doug Walker didn't say anything about it and tried to avoid uh, any talks about hashtag change the channel, I think he has pretty much made his opinion very clear on where he stands on this. And the reason why he didn't say anything is mainly because, of course, he refuses to apologize. Like, he is pretty much now against anyone uh, who is a part of hashtag change the channel or if there is anyone that is not on his side specifically where as you could tell through the ages Doug Walker has grown a bit of a diva style personality from many of the stories about Doug Walker and from there it is also noticeable a bit from his videos that also they are a bit suffering as well that you could tell that they are a lot less for the entertainment, they're a lot less for the viewers, and it's all for the numbers, you know? It, like, D Doug is obviously right now just doing it for the money, he's just doing it for the views, it, it, like, he has pretty much sold his soul at this point, and uh, the whole hashtag change the channel uh, Doug's response in a way, it's kind of like uh, the final nail in the coffin to know that he has pretty much become a soulless individual. Like, he just has no cares to give anymore. And it's through there that I noticed that there really is that toxicity that is forever linked 
with uh, Channel Awesome. And to go answer the other part of your question, if there is a chance that he might feel sorry and he just doesn't know what to say, he has had several months, he had over a year to think about what to actually say and how to address it. Like, if he would actually want to go and address it, he would actually take the time to actually think about the words he wants to go and address. But considering it's been uh, over a year, no, he he's making it clear that he just wants to ignore it and just hope that somehow hashtag change the channel is going to disappear. But... Uh, knowing the internet and how much they love drama, that is never going to happen. It is forever connected with Channel Awesome forever. In fact, nowadays it is near impossible uh, to talk about Channel Awesome without bringing up hashtag change the channel. And as for your question regarding the fan base becoming toxic and stuff like that, I mean, I guess it would honestly depend. I'm, I'm going to say initially or in general... Not really. I would say no, but it does depend on certain topics. Like, if anyone would talk about hashtag change the channel, then yes, there would indeed be a little bit of, uh, like, a little bit of controversy and a little bit of toxicity coming from the Channel Awesome fan base if you would go and ever bring that up. Like, the maturity kind of goes down a little bit, let's just say. And uh, I think there was a previous Q&A with Animat video where... Uh, I answered a question regarding if I would go and collaborate with Doug Walker or something like that or uh, like appear in a Nostalgia Critic episode and I and I answered with a maybe but considering the toxicity that is now revolving around Channel Awesome and with Doug Walker uh, I'm gonna be honest I would have to say I'm changing my answer to absolutely not and I think it's for the best that I don't touch that company with a 10-foot pole. In fact, uh, I, I would even say that uh, going back into the element of the fan base, uh, I'm just going to say right now, if you still watch the Nostalgia Critic, if you still watch his reviews and stuff like that, I mean, you do whatever you want. That's fine. Whatever. But there is still a little bit of a part of me knowing the toxicity of Doug Walker and how he actually is as an individual and how he would uh, uh, now make his Nostalgia Critic episodes. It is a little bit cringy to see people online or like people when they would uh, respond to uh, comments and stuff like that by making direct comparisons to whatever opinion I would express on a movie with uh, the Nostalgia Nostalgia critics where they would say like I, I would talk about a movie and then someone would say like nostalgia critic doesn't like that movie and I would just be on the side looking at it going oh god dude you still watch that guy you you, you know it, it's just the element that there are still people out there who do take Doug Walker's criticisms very seriously uh, that, that's just, uh, th th there, I, I think the best way to put it is that there's still a part of me that kind of like winces a little bit. There, there's still that cringy element that, that, that they would still take Doug Walker seriously as a legitimate film critic. It's just like, oh God. So yeah, hopefully that will answer your question that Doug has pretty much made it clear that, um, yeah, he's just a soulless prick right now, and ironically, he has become the Nostalgia Critic in the worst way possible, that he took all the worst traits about the Nostalgia Critic and pretty much en enveloped it himself to become a brand new Doug Walker. I mean, not to say that he was always a bad person. I mean, late 2010 and early... No, not late 2010. Uh, late 2000s and early 2010 Doug Walker is an admirable and inspiring figure. Late 2010 Doug Walker, however, that is someone that you aspire to never be. Okay, so the next question that we got here is going to be on Facebook through Brian Walsh. And Brian asked me... After seeing Spongebob and Anastasia becoming successful on the Broadway stage, are there any other non-Disney animated properties that you think could be turned into a Broadway musical? That is actually a pretty good question, and uh, thinking about it, honestly... Like, th there's a lot of major possibilities. You can pretty much take a bunch of animated features and in the right hands, they can turn that into an amazing Broadway musical. Like, you could take something that's not an actual musical, like uh, Coraline, for example, 
and you could put that on Broadway and it could turn out very well. Or you could take something like uh, The Book of Life and you can really have a lot of creativity with the set in order to make something unique and pretty amazing. But I did think about it a little bit regarding that question and there's one in particular that I do feel like would actually make a great Broadway musical. And some people might say immediately, oh what about The Prince of Egypt? I'm just gonna say right now that The Prince of Egypt is well on its way to becoming a legitimate Broadway musical. That is going to happen uh, pretty soon and I would not be surprised if that would be the case. Uh, but one that I thought would actually make an amazing Broadway musical and would be great for this time right now would actually be An American Tale. Because if you really do think about it, uh, that is something that I can imagine the Broadway people can have a lot of fun in terms of creativity uh, to express the mice and play around with like giant sets to blow everything up. Uh, a little bit in the same veins of like cats or something like that. And you already got a lot of elements that people love. There is that factor of uh, nostalgia that's there that people grew up watching an American tale. Uh, there is the songs that are already great, that are already well crafted and everybody loved and like people would want to go see it to see like a stage production of somewhere out there. Oh, and also seeing like new versions of the characters like Fievel and the Mousekowitz and Tiger, like seeing brand new versions of those and seeing them revived in a way and seeing them on the stage, you know, seeing them in a brand new way that people have yet to go and experience before. I could see a lot of very strong potentials, but I think one important factor that I feel like there would be a great reason to why an American Tale musical would actually work out extremely well, it would actually be because of the element of immigration. That this uh, Broadway musical would actually incorporate a very strong message regarding immigration because in this current culture, uh, immigration really is a bit of a hot button topic, especially nowadays with the way that they are being treated with the Trump administration basically putting on concentration camps and locking kids up in cages and whatever criticisms that would be thrown at them, they would desperately try and pin all the blame on Democrats and on Obama and whatever. But the thing is, um, I feel like this would be a great way to go and remind people of how immigrants are people as well. They are humans too. That they are no different than you or me. And one great way to go and project that as well, um, if you are going to go and do it, then you must cast Fievel and all the Mousequits as people of color or present all the mice as people of color to help really sell out that message about immigration. So honestly, my answer would be an American tale. I would love to see that be turned into a Broadway musical because it would have a powerful message. The songs are already there. The lovable characters are already there. The nostalgia factor is there. Oh, the story, of course. It already, that's what I was thinking about. It has a great story already. So I think it would be a great thing to turn into to a Broadway musical. All right, so now our next question is gonna be from Blake Hawkins on Twitter. And Blake asked me, a tad early to ask, but what's your favorite animated movie to watch around Halloween? Well, to be very honest, I don't really have much Halloween animated movies to go and check out, but uh, there are a few from time to time that I would go and enjoy, like, uh, of course, The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's pretty much uh, a Halloween staple for many, or even a Christmas staple. Either way, like, it actually does work out, and probably the only movie in existence that actually works either for Halloween or for Christmas. Uh, there is also, and funny enough, uh, The Book of Life. Even though that one is more about Dia de los Muertos, um, the element of skeletons and the undead, there is a little bit of that Halloween theme attached to it. And it is still a pretty good animated film to watch, so uh, it, it definitely is one to go and enjoy. But around the Halloween time, like, why not? It, it, you know, it's, it's fun to check out. Uh, but honestly, in terms of my Halloween movies, that if I would have to go and talk about mine personally, they're actually live action ones. And uh, two in specifically 
that I really do enjoy checking out on Halloween. One of them, of course, is Hocus Pocus, which nowadays is fully becoming a Halloween classic, which I'm really happy about because honestly, I feel like it's actually a legitimately good movie. Like, uh, like, like seriously, well-crafted and there's some smart elements into it as well. And of course, a lot of great performances, especially from the Sanderson sisters. Uh, but then there's also another one that nowadays I would have to consider it a guilty pleasure is actually... The Tower of Terror. Yes, the TV movie that is based on the Disney Hollywood Studios attraction. That is one that when I was a kid, I would watch every Halloween. And I mean, like, it's stupid, it's corny, but you know what? It's still a lot of fun to watch regardless. So those are actually my Halloween movies more so than any animated movies. Alright, so now we have one more question to go and answer, and this will be on Twitter once again, and it is from Rachel Izakowitz. And Rachel asked me, What are your thoughts on celebrities doing voiceover work in animated films? Now, that's actually a pretty interesting question because I know that among the voiceover community and even a bit on the animation community, it is pretty controversial regarding the use of celebrities in terms of voice acting because there are some good ways that you can use them and sometimes there are some bad ways to use them. Like, yeah, I would definitely be opposed to it when it's evidently clear that they are just used for marketing purposes only. It's not necessarily because they are great talents, but it's mainly because they just want to go and sell on the names. And there are plenty of mainstream companies that are absolutely guilty of doing this. Uh, rather it be DreamWorks, Illumination, Sony, Blue Sky... Like, they have all done that, and sometimes the results can be just downright embarrassing, especially when the celebrities, uh, they're not necessarily putting in effort, or, like, they don't even bring in actors. Like, sometimes they would go and bring in singers, or, like, just music artists that are not necessarily actors, and it is noticeable that they don't necessarily have the acting chops uh, to go and actually perform, uh, especially for voiceover, since that does require a different style of training, uh, more so than regular acting. Uh, but then, uh, of course, there are some good ways of actually using celebrities as voice actors, because sometimes uh, they can actually translate very well onto just the voice. There are plenty of actors that can supply a great performances, and yeah, there are some that it's easily noticeable that it is that specific celebrity's voice, uh, but there are a few that actually do put in a little bit more effort to play out a different character. Like, a great example is Bill Hader from Inside Out and Up. He has provided a lot of amazing performances where it's almost unnoticeable that it actually was from him. Rather it be, of course, like Inside Out, The Angry Birds Movie, Sausage Party, or even in uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, Bill Hader has provided some amazing voiceover talents and he could actually have a great career as a voiceover. So honestly, to answer that question, it, it really does depend on how they would go and use it. Because um, if it's noticeable that they're just doing it for the marketing purposes instead of bringing in actual talent, then yeah, that's the part where we would have a little bit of a problem. And to be very honest, that's honestly part of why I really do admire uh, Disney and Pixar when it comes to bringing in voiceovers uh, for their animated features. Because you could definitely tell that they actually value talent more so than actually bringing in celebrities. And it has been a tradition that's been going on ever since the very beginning of these companies. But more specifically, even nowadays, they are still doing it. And like when you do look back into some of the movies that they have produced, like uh, some of these movies, actually they've created some stars. Like Frozen nowadays is one of the biggest animated films of the decade. And beforehand, not many people are really that familiar with the name of Idina Menzel or Josh Gad, unless you're more of a Broadway fan than you already know them already. But to the general public, they were 
a bit of unknowns, but then suddenly Frozen was released, and that pretty much changed that, where they have now become A-list celebrities, and very well earned as well, because uh, people like Adina Menzel and Josh Gad, they're great actors, especially. Now, this is not to say that Disney doesn't do it, like, for example, the upcoming uh, Onward, or at least by the time I am recording this, uh, the upcoming Onward, that does have celebrities starring in the feature, like... Uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. It does happen when Disney does it, but when it comes to uh, finding talent and who would they want to get to fit with the characters, it's obvious that they value the talent more so than just the name for marketing purposes. And with that said, that is pretty much it for this Q&A. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. It was definitely a blast answering these questions. And also special thanks to everyone who went and asked me a question. And if you guys have a question you want to ask me, go right ahead. Don't hold back. Just ask it. Uh, it could be like in the comments or it could be like on my social media, whatever it is. If you have a great question you want to go and ask me and hopefully I could probably answer right here in uh, Q&A with Animat, then just go ahead and just ask me already. So with all that said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, see you later dudes.